catch them in the pasture, run them in a pen, work them on the Sundays, do it all again, raise them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Saddlebrock Rider, and you're watching the Pepper Stewart Show. That wasn't me that said that. That was him. He told you that. He said that that was NFR 2016, I believe, and uh, NFR 2022 will be back. We've got the uh, media team headed up there. I think oh, uh, Kenny Kenneth. Kenny. No one killed him yet. Don't kill Kenny. Uh, him and Lindsay are going up to Las Vegas for the uh, ending rounds of the NFR to bring you guys some interviews, some photographs, and some random stuff because that's what happens in Las Vegas. Um, speaking of random stuff, we got random stuff for you today. We're going to talk to uh, Cassie Joy. She sings songs. She's going to sing a song for you and then talk about some stuff. We got uh, her on today. Uh, what else we got? We got some story time. I went to New Orleans. I've heard a lot of stuff about New Orleans. I've never been. It's never been a uh, destination on my radar to go to. So I did go uh, last week. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that from what is uh, what can be told on TV. Um, we're going to talk about that. Uh, quarter horse. We got some quarter horse stuff for you going down. Uh cow stuff we got some cow stuff for you the uh the brd we're gonna tell you about that and what's going on with it we've got the top five trending topics in cow news for you um everyone's favorite why i don't know the odd news we got some odd news for you we've got uh some guinness world records everybody wants to set a record everybody wants to be a record holder so we got some more of those records uh, I think one's about an ambulance driver, one's a Trojan horse, and uh, Lindsay's favorite, the monkeys. We've got a couple monkeys. And then uh, the world record clap. Not sure what that means, but we're going to talk about it. Um, Yellowstone's coming out. Season 5 is about to kick off. Uh, we got some stuff for that. And uh, Tulsa King, if you haven't heard or wondering about it, it uh, is launched and launching so we're going to tell you about that even show the trailer so we got that coming up uh what else we, what do we do first let's talk about let's talk about new orleans let's talk about new orleans because i went i went there never been there never been on radar to go to because of this all the stories that i've heard so i guess you know it's all that it's here saying whatever so we get to new orleans we get down there we drive in we drive all night from dallas oh, seven hours because i go too fast or not depending on which cops listen um, so then we get down there, uh, we're staying in the, uh, mansion de Chalou or something or another, I don't know. It's a little two bedroom apartment under a mansion, like it used to be the carriage house or car park under the, uh, under the mansion. It was pretty neat. It was a nice two bedroom, uh, place to stay. It was pretty neat. Uh, that's it right there. You're looking at it. So where that, if you're looking at the left side, that second light lit up. That was our room up under there. They said that the house was originally raised because of the flooding and stuff. They raised it up. So anyway, that's a nice place. Nice house. Great, great uh, place to stay. Not too far from downtown New Orleans. I think it was only like a five-minute drive for us to drive in. So we stayed down there. Went to uh, went and rode the uh, Creole Queen. Got on the big boat, rode out, ate some cage and stuff. Uh, went and checked out an old uh, historic home. You know what you do, right? So we did that. Um, went and walked around New Orleans. Now, to me, I'm I'm here in Dallas right now, and for walking around New Orleans was similar, I guess, to walking around Dallas. I mean, you've seen kind of the same things. Uh, depending on what parts of the neighborhood you were in, this is what you've seen. I mean, like, we've seen some guys helping each other out with, I think it might have been COVID vaccines, you know. They were taking turns, you know, helping each other. So, I mean, they're friendly folks. Um, 
there was a there was an underpass which really caught my eye. I want to get some pictures of it. I didn't get pictures of it. I want to get pictures. There was an under the pass of a highway similar to what's out here outside the studio, and there was just like there was tents like tent city, but they were huge tents like three bedroom tents, and there was even some like motor home trailers like the old school motor home trailers parked out there with generators outside and cords run into it so i'm like you just you know if you just want to hang out and live in new orleans just go park under the bridge throw up a tent i mean you're walking distance to everywhere you want to go so i mean i could see the allure kind of kind of like austin when i was down there not too long ago and it was the same thing you had a lot of a lot of the uh the homeless homeless folks around there but a lot of people that's that's the way they live it's where they like it so um it was an interesting experience um we did do the a uh, couple of tours went look some stuff we went to the death house i think the death house or the death museum that was weird that was that was seriously strange yeah the, the museum of death in new orleans that was crazy um it was similar to one of the death houses we went to in uh savannah but not as extreme as was here in new orleans i mean there was some crazy videos and stuff going down I'm talking about like babies with their heads cut off and stuff i mean it was it was intense but it, it was a good time we got to see stuff uh we did go on a paranormal adventure with some paranormal folks doing some investigations of course nothing happened which that's uh on par for when we go to those but it was it was interesting what are the what other are, what are pictures do I, do I put some more pictures in there what do i have we have to see because i'm wondering what i've got uh, in there oh okay so we went to that is the mardi gras that longhorn is the ncba cattleman to cattleman and what that is is if you watched previous episodes we told you that um the cattleman's convention is going to be new orleans next year and so we got a sneak peek at their uh uh, floats, I guess, you know, float stuff that they're going to do. Mardi Gras World is where we went. Mardi Gras World. So we've seen a lot of stuff they're working on now. You see people working in there, and then you see past floats, stuff they're doing. And so we happen to run across the Longhorn Cattle for the uh, Cattleman Convention that's going to happen in February during Mardi Gras. So that's going to be good to uh, check out if you're into that. Um, we didn't go downtown at night. We didn't go at night. We were back at our uh, our room by then, but uh, that was downtown at the French Market. Walked around that, checked it out. Uh, I think that's a shot down Bourbon Street during the day, so that's why it looks so calm. Uh, oh yeah, it is. That's Bourbons and Orleans Street, so that was pretty fun checking out. Uh, that was on the boat. That's the Jackson something or another that everybody takes a picture of when they're walking on the street. Well, I accidentally took a picture of it while I was on a boat. I didn't know what I took a picture of, but that was it. So, um, and yeah, they got all the all the mules. They got the mule wagons out there, and I'm just like, man, how how often do you rotate those mules? Because some of the mules look like, man, I'm ready to go home. Uh, that was crazy. That right there was a restaurant on the day we left. We went to go eat. Of course, I ate some more alligator because that's what I eat over there. I've not have been there, but. It's Louisiana food. Alligator. Just like the free man's got a good alligator down the road. Um, that was a restaurant. It was like a third floor restaurant. And you were sitting outside on a ledge. I'm serious. was not even three foot wide. And it was leaning down. And I was just wondering how long it would be before we fall off the thing. The table that we ate on had to have been maybe a foot and a half. I mean, the place just barely fit on the tables. And the... The waitress could barely fit through between the table and the wall. So, I mean, it wasn't very big at all. It was tiny, but it was uh, it was an inter interesting uh, ordeal, I guess. So, what else we got going on? We did that. Um, that was my that was my New Orleans trip. It was, it was a fun deal. I It took me a few days to warm up to it because I'm just, I don't know. I just always look at my head, head on the swivel, looking, what, what are they doing? Who's doing what? What's going on? So, it was... It was it was a fun time after about day two or three, and uh, would I go back? I I don't know. It's just that's just not my scene. But it was it was a fun time, and I could just say I've been there. Right? That's what everybody wants to say. At least I've been there. I even got the T-shirt. So, um, 
What is happening now? You got uh, anybody buzzed in over there, or do we need to do some some vidges? Okay. Um, that's why you're punching that up and getting ready. Uh, let's do. Let me do this. The time of year is now. Uh, American Quarter Association, the Quarter Horse Journal came out their breeding edition or stallion edition. What are you going to call it? It just came out. I uh, picked mine up a couple days ago. Went through it. Seen a lot of studs I'd like to breed to that I can't afford. Um, so check it out. This breeding breeding season is not going to happen till next year, but now is the time to make your decisions, narrow it down, send in your deposits, get your deposits in on the stud of your choice. And make sure you got a good mare. Don't just... Got some random mare that's got papers that doesn't do anything that don't ride. You gotta, you gotta breed quality. If, you, if your mare, if you got a mare, you want to breed her. She's got paper, that's fine. But make sure it's a quality horse. Make sure she's doing something. <clears throat> you want to have a quality horse, not just some random old horse that just walks around and eats grass. I mean, you're breeding for performance. You're gonna spend the money on a good stud. At least have a good mare to breed too. So that's my two cents on that. Uh, we do have a video I want to throw out to you. We've got a, a musical guest coming up. But before we tell you who that is, let's show you her work. How do we even get here? Walking on eggshells, questioning myself. Don't know when it got weird It's like you can't tell I'm in some kind of hell So let's give it a rest, dear Cause I can't pick up my phone When I hear your tone I'm trying my best here But I need you to let me go You double-crossed a line Can't between them you made me lose my mind still trying to get 
that tune right there from Cassie Joy. Check it out. It's out there. The new single, Business of Breaking Up, is out there for you, along with her new holiday uh, <clears throat> single, The Tree and Me. Uh, over 40 million views, about 350,000 followers. Uh, been on The Voice. Got the ultimate four chair uh, turnaround by being there and shared the stage with multiple talented folks. And with that, we've got her right here. Cassie, what is going on? Hi, thanks for having me. So what what are you up to? What's going on right now? Oh my gosh, just releasing so much music lately, writing so much new music, getting ready to release that, um, and uh, planning a crazy uh, schedule of a touring as per usual. So just trying to keep my head on straight, my hat on. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And... Uh... A little birdie told me that you've been doing uh, doing music for a while, and that at some point you were uh, in the commotions. Yes, that was with Radio Disney, and I was like 14 years old, and I did a karaoke competition at the mall, of course, because <laughs> uh, I wanted to win that karaoke machine. <laughs> and after that, I got approached uh, from Radio Disney, and they were creating this pop girl group, and I was still like yodeling at that time and in the country opry circuit, and I was like, well, sure, I'll wear a headset and do choreography, so <laughs> did that for a little bit, and it was super fun. It, it sounds like it. So uh, you grew up an athlete, you know, you, you were competitive, you landed a scholarship, uh, you did the whole college thing. At what point in all of that did you th decide that uh, music was a route you wanted to go? So it was it was always that route. Um, I I had never thought of myself as a brain person like I like college was never in the cards for me it was like right after high school I was going to go to Nashville and start with my music and all that um and then um senior year I got approached by Park University and they offered me a scholarship to run track and that just had never even been a thought in my mind of something that I could do and I was like you know what why not try this um and I kept pursuing music at that time um but then once I graduated college it was like I'm definitely not going to use my degree. I mean, I am in my heart, but um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's, we're going full bore music. We're going to Nashville. So what is it like for, for the people that are watching the show, people in the show, it's always, it's always a different dynamic. So being on the voice, what was that process like, you know, going through the voice and getting to the stage for the opportunity for the turns? Yeah, it's actually a much longer process than a lot of people know and that what the TV shows you. Um, <clears throat> and it was really cool to just see the behind the scenes stuff of everything that goes into it that, you know, the viewers don't really get to see. But I mean, it's it's about a nine month process um, and just a month long process for the blind auditions. So you really get to learn so much of the ins and outs and just being inside of the music industry at the level that you're trying so hard hard to get to so it was just a really special that side of it was really special to me what was it like for you when the moment the moment comes like here you go you're on stage show them what you got and you start singing and those chairs start turning what what's going through your mind at that time <laughs> basically <laughs> yeah so i came in yodeling like that's the first thing out of my face and i was like i just don't know if they're gonna get it like you know especially if they can't you know see me and i was all i've never been a person that was very confident in just having a unique voice and so yeah i that's the most nervous that i've ever been and um thank god to my mom for making me learn to yodel when I was very young because it finally came in handy. <laughs> and speaking of, of your, your yodeling things, what were, as, as you were growing up and, and singing, and what were your musical influences? What was the music that you listened to that kind of drove you in the direction that you're in? That's a great question. I would go back and forth between like what I would, the songs my mom was having me learn for the Opry circuits, which was, you know, Tanya Tucker, Brenda Lee, Leanne Rimes, um, pa Patsy Klein, all of the classics, um, Loretta Lynn. Um, and then I would switch over to, you know, my Will Smith CD or Dr. Dre or Snoop Doggy Dog. Um, so I feel like I'm my, my sound hopefully is 
eclectic and reflecting my, you know, crazy all over the place musical tastes. And I always kind of want to make sure that, I mean, I don't think that my country music sounds like Snoop Dogg or Dr. Dre, <laughs> but. <laughs> right, right. So you, you play instruments, uh, you play guitar, you play piano. Um, <clears throat> as far as playing inter instruments, what is your favorite instrument to play? Um, gosh, I go like my answer could be different in 30 minutes. I go back and forth. It kind of depends on the moment. Like if I'm really wanting to rock out, I want to be on a guitar. Um, but if I want to be in my feels, like I'm much more comfortable on piano. I'm more comfortable writing songs on piano. Um, and then they always get translated to guitar because I can have more energy on stage with the guitar. So right. yeah, it's, it's, it's different every day. Yeah. All right, and you and you're touring. You're on the road. Matter of fact, you're going to be down here in Dallas, uh, not too long from now. When you're out there traveling, what a lot of folks always are, it makes curious. I guess the fans are always curious about is when you're out there on the road and you're traveling. What road snacks are you hauling with you? Uh, fire Cheetos, always. Um, a lot of barbecue sunflower seeds, um, and we usually try to hit up a Chipotle when we're on the road. <laughs> right. Because what a what a perfect on the road snack. A yes. giant burrito. <laughs> you can't you can never go wrong with a burrito. Right. Uh, and I'm gonna go back to your sunflower seeds because I go back and forth with this a lot. On the sunflower seeds, are you eating the whole sunflower seed or are you cracking and spitting them? I love that you even knew that those were options. I didn't know how to eat sunflower seeds properly until like I was a real life adult, I guess some years ago. Um, but yeah, I used to always as a kid, I would just eat the whole dang thing because that you get more salt that yeah. way. Well, that, that was that was me. I didn't know. I just ate. The yeah. whole, I just chewed up real good. I ate the whole thing. And one day I was eating some stuff. I said, they're like, what are you, where are you spitting those yeah, out? Where's your spit cup? I'm spitting what? What am I spitting out? I mean, the whole thing. Yeah, it's the whole seed. You get the full on, right. the full mock seed. I didn't know that was an option, so okay. <laughs> when you do get a chance to turn on the TV, which everybody's busy all the time, they don't turn TV on. If you turn on the TV, or you go on Netflix, you stream in regular TV, and what are you watching? Oh, I just finished Love is, uh, L yeah, Love is Blind the other day. I'm sorry, I'm all about that reality <laughs> TV. <laughs> um, just finished that. Um, God, we're, we are open to a new show at this point. We need something new. Uh, Hot D, House of the Dragon is over. So we're needing something new to binge now. Okay. Are yeah. you catching Ted Yellow Lasso, that's coming out next. Are you, are you catching Yellowstone at all? Are you on that Yellowstone craze? Oh yeah, I am in it. I am living it. Absolutely. My husband actually just got back from the liquor style because it's Thursday night football <laughs> and he just got the uh, Yellowstone bourbon to celebrate the season starting soon. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, that'll be some good watching. Yeah. Good watching. Um, money's not an option. Money's not an option at all. Your ideal vacation. Um, Scotland. That's where that would be amazing. Well, just anywhere in Europe. I still haven't been to Europe yet. Um, but if I can't leave the country, I'm going to Minnesota. Minnesota. What's in Minnesota? Lakes. I'm a I'm a mermaid. Okay. They, they got lakes. There's lakes everywhere. You got lakes in Texas. You got Texoma. <laughs> Yeah, I got a lot of family up in Minnesota. So like, yeah, when I bring people to like my favorite place on earth, they're like, what? Like we could be in Cancun right now for vacation. And I'm like, but you're not going to get the campfire stories. It's not the same. So you're just heading to Minnesota and going skiing. Yes, absolutely. All right. Um, with, <laughs> with the, uh, the stages that you've shared, um, so far throughout your, your career, what was your, not to really put you on the spot, what was your favorite, uh, shared stage and what stage out there that you would really like to share? Um, <clears throat> my favorite one is kind of an off the wall one. Um, we were in Canada and I got to open for Buck Cherry and Finger Eleven, which is 
I am not on that bill normally. <laughs> I literally ended my set with a yodeling song and then we go into, hey, you're crazy. <laughs> and, <laughs> but we got to like hang out with those guys for so long after the show and just getting to see like how these like crazy rockers then like were playing board games after the show. And like, it was just a really special experience. And I got to have my dad out in Canada with me for that. So it was really cool. All right. And so what's, what's a, uh a stage or a uh, another musician out there that you'd like to maybe do some collaboration with? I would love to collaborate with Tyler Childers or Rustin Kelly. All right, that's good. We might have a little bit of a, a different sound, but like, right. shouldn't that just be married and we make it something weird? Right, there you go. <laughs> that's all you can do, right? That's how you yeah. Do Okay, so your tour schedule is is out. Uh, it's on your website. And for those that are looking to figure out where you're going to be and what is going on, uh, what is the – is it the website the best to go to, social media? Where would you point the folks to go? Yeah, easiest place to start is CassieJoy.com. And um, it's spelled casino without the no, out of joy. <laughs> All right. Think about it. <laughs> yeah. Get them. There, there we go. There's tour dates. Yeah, 11, 1130 Dallas, House of Blues. Then Austin, yeah, San Antonio. So okay. So making making the Dallas round, the Texas rounds. Yes. Yeah. We're so excited to get down there. Um, hopefully it'll be, you know, some good weather. And I think now, like, we're we're past Thanksgiving by the point, the time that I get to House of Blues. So it might turn into a Christmas show. We'll see. People want to let me know. Should this be a Christmas show? Should I do some Christmas right. songs? <laughs> there you go. There you, go. you got Christmas songs out. You know, House of Blues. It's just right, right down the road here. Uh, if you, I don't know. When is your? Uh, when was your Austin show? What was the date on that one? Um, that might. It's the next day. I think it's December first. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're already gone. Uh, oh no, you're December. First, Austin, December second, in San Antonio. Yeah, so you're gonna be gone from North Texas. I was gonna tell you the uh, the big Yellowstone event going on in Fort Worth is that Friday the second with the cast oh. of Yellowstone and 1883 celebrity cutting event, Fort Worth, <laughs> Texas. Of course it is. You're miss, you're gonna miss it. So that's, that's right. I'll, I'll be there for you. I'll get the interviews and the videos for you, and I'll, I'll send them to you. So that way you can I'll be follow like along. Right. <laughs> right. All right. Well, well, Cassie, we appreciate you visiting with us and uh, taking time out of your busy schedule, as we just seen, to uh, tell us what you got going on and give us a little bit of behind the scenes information. And uh, we wish, wish you luck on tour, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys soon in Dallas. Thank you. All right, Cassie Joy coming down the street to the House of Blues to sing some songs for you guys here in uh, in uh, North Texas. Uh, we got a trailer for you coming up. Um, speaking of Yellowstone, Taylor Sheridan, he is part of uh, this deal going down. He's the executive producer, is uh, Sheridan. It's Tulsa Kings. It follows the New York, New York Mafia. Uh, Dwight, the general, played by Sylvester Stallone, after he's released from prison after 25 years and uh, unceremoniously exiles his boss to set up shop in none other than Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm not reading any more of this. I'll just show you what's happening. kept my mouth shut for 25 years. I don't know what you're expecting. Now that you're back. I'm expecting adequate compensation. Tulsa. What's Tulsa? I want you to go there. The horse race, the Springboard Mile. There's nobody doing nothing. You can do whatever you want. Not exactly the welcome I was expecting. Name's Tyson. Welcome to Tulsa. Two grand a week. You drive for me now. What crew runs this neighborhood? No crew up in here. We're in the middle of nowhere. What will it be? I assume you don't have Keontae. You assume correctly. I wouldn't have pegged you as the Boy Scout. Why not? 
This wasn't necessary. What is that place? It's a dispensary. Oh my God, is he dead? No, he's taking a break. This is how it's gonna work. I'll protect you from the gangs. What gangs? And the law. This is legal. You gotta know your risk. There was no risk until you came along. Ever heard of Black McAdam? It's a motorcycle gang. You're overplaying your hand. When I play my hand, you won't see it coming. Any flammable liquids or firearms? In the box? Nah. This situation is not going to be controllable for much longer. Get down! You got a pretty good appetite for someone who was just shot at. If I stopped eating every time somebody tried to hurt me, I'd be a skeleton. I want to be up front with you. Things are getting ugly. This they were in the mafia? Nah, there's no such a thing. Is this a one-off? Or one of many? Too soon to tell. Check it out. Tulsa King. Tulsa King. Check it out. Good stuff happening. Uh, Taylor Sheridan is doing a lot of stuff. Matter of fact, uh, Yellowstone Season 5 will kick off on November the 13th. I think also Tulsa King kick off November 13th. And for a little behind-the-scenes information, Yellowstone is reshooting uh, some scenes for Season 5. And uh, if you happen to see a guy that looks like me uh, in some particular scenes, you're not mistaken. Your eyes are not playing tricks on you. Yes, uh, that's probably me. Uh, let's talk about cow stuff. We got cow stuff happening. Um, BRD. You need to diagnose your BRD early and uh, win the game of hide and seek. Uh, I recently dealt with some of this with a couple of calves that I've got. So I'm going to let you know that uh, it's stuff you should know. Cattle Behavior makes an early diagnosis of bovine respiratory disease, BRD, in calves is a game of hide and seek. Uh, the natural behavior of cattle makes early diagnosis of bovine respiratory disease a game of hide and seek. They told you that twice. I guess I want to make sure you don't forget. Um, calves are... Uh, Calves are a prey species, so they're instinctively good at hiding behind their healthy pen mates and masking the illness from us. Uh, calves don't want to appear to be weak, so even when they're not feeling well, they'll pick their heads up and move around normally within the group. Uh, they'll go to the uh, the feeder, put their heads down like the rest of the calves, but they may not be eating. So you always want to make sure that your calves, even though they're at the feeders, make sure they're eating. Uh, finding sick calves early is critical. If you're not paying close attention, then you can lose calves without recognizing uh, the severity of the disease. Uh, even those animals that survive can suffer from lifelong lung damage, and uh, that curtails the future health and productivity. So no cigarettes for the calves. Uh, first signs of BRD in calves, loss of appetite. They're slow, lethargic. These symptoms may be quickly followed up by Labored breathing, discharge from the eyes or nose, coughing, depression, send them to the psychiatrist, and drooped heads and ears. So basically what it's trying to tell you without telling you, they're trying to be technical on this, but when you're out riding your cattle and you're checking your calves, if, if you check your cows every day, you, you want to check them every day, at least every couple of days. I try to make sure to see mine at least once a day or every couple of days just to see what's going on. And you, if, if you see your cows enough, you'll notice a difference. If you got calves that are normally out there running and playing, and you ride out there and they just look like Droopy the dog, you know, trotting up, walking along, barely going, then something's up. And it's better to go ahead and get those calves early. Like if you see, if you see something's not right, go ahead and get them. Go out there and catch those calves. Go ahead and hit them with a shot. It's better to go ahead and hit them with, uh, with some medicine ahead of time than waiting too long one well i don't know it was he kind of slow or was he not moving slow or was his head up was he eating i don't well he was at the trough but i don't know if he ate or not well no don't second guessing is not gonna do any good second guessing is gonna lose your calf so when you see one that's down you get out there and you get them a shot 
uh, I posted some pictures the other day of some calves that I was working on. I jumped in the golf cart with a rope to go out there. I was going to go out and rope some calves off the golf cart because I had a couple of calves. They were lethargic, just barely walking around, not doing much, not moving. Other calves are playing. They're not playing. So I took off on the golf cart. I was going to go out there and rope these calves and go and doctor them out in the, in the pasture. <laughs> I rode the golf cart up to the calf. The calf just stood there and looked at me. What calf do you know you ride up on with anything? Just there and look at you. So this calf stood there and looked at me, got off, threw a rope, popped a rope on him, pulled him over, gave him some shots, some vitamins, went on and uh, checked him, waited about two days, checked him again, hit him with some more shots, and uh, let him go. And about two days later, went back out there, and you couldn't catch them suckers. They're, you know, flighty going. So you know, you know, yeah, you caught something early, you got it worked out, you got it fixed. So you need to be paying more attention. Uh, to your cattle, not to your cell phone texting or looking at TikTok videos when you're out there in the pasture. Be sure you are checking your cows. Um, let's see what else the doctor is going to tell you. Uh, the key to keeping calves healthy is doing and doing well is recognize signs of illness and treat them as early as possible, almost when the animals are already getting sick. Yeah, I think I just said that doctor uh what else we got early diagnosis and treatment uh left unchecked inflammation caused permanent damage to the lungs uh support the antibiotics a common misconception is that antibiotics cure disease in animals the doctor points out that antibiotics are in fact designed to reduce the ability of bacterial pathogens to reproduce in the animal's body so the antibiotic is not actually curing it it's just slowing it down um, what we're doing with antibiotic treatment is allowing the animal's immune system to function properly and eliminate the pathogens from its body. Uh, we learned that minimize the stress after treatment, return to the calf its original group. The calf is more likely to be comfortable, have less stress, and go back on feed and water, which is important for recovery. Thanks, Dr. Obvious. Um, so, yeah, keep it on your cows. Keep it on your calves. You want to make sure you got healthy herds, especially in these times. You want to make sure everything is good because... Uh, it will hit your pocketbook. I don't know what beef is going for in the supermarkets, but I can probably guess, along with everything else, it's probably pretty high. Um, so do that. Also, if you're if you're uh, interested in uh, buying local, you can always go to a local farm or ranch in your area and uh, buy beef directly. And in the long run, it will be cheaper than buying it in a grocery store. It may seem like a lot of money up front at once, but when you break it down, you're buying your beef. Once you buy a calf, you pack it out. Uh, the, I think, if I remember right, the last couple calves uh, that we sold uh, to some folks to pack, by the time they bought the calf from us, had the processing done, it came down to about $3 a pound, something like that, three, three fifty a pound. So you're thinking that's 350 pound across the board. So that's 350 pound hamburger meat, 350 pound steaks, uh, briskets, roasts. Go to the go to the grocery store and process stuff, and then you'll probably decide uh, to go to Home Depot and buy a big deep freeze. That's probably what you're gonna do. Uh, let's see what the trending headlines are in the beef world right now. Uh, the five trending headlines in the beef world. Let's see if there's any that are interesting enough to tell you about uh, the drought monitor everybody's talking about that um, drought we know that Montana ranchers keeps Montana ranchers seeking the culprit who killed their cattle is this a real story or are they trying to mix Yellowstone into this Paul and Jean have lived on their ranch at the base of the prior mountains for decades Say every day brings something new. Their 18,000 acre property near Montana Wyoming border is their livelihood. 18,000 that's a lot of country to cover. Uh, when their neighbors called them on Monday afternoon, let them know that three of their cows had been found shot dead. They were shot. Didn't understand why anybody would do something like that, and uh, they have no idea what happened to their cows. The losses these, these animals cost them at least 5,000. I guess that's all three. According to witnesses, the man in Dodge Dakota drove the dirt road and shot two calves and a cow from inside his truck. Apparently, you made somebody mad. That's what that sounds like. They've been watching too much Yellowstone. That's what I think happened. 
too much Yellowstone for those folks. Stop watching it. It's a TV show, guys. It's a drama TV show. It's not real life. Although, it is entertaining. And I will tell you, uh, on the last couple of sets that I was on, I was surprised at the heights of a, a couple of the cast members. I was like, wow, she's really taller than I thought she was. And, uh, that was pretty interesting. Um, are we out of time? We got time left for anything? I got odd news, but I don't think we got time for that, do we? Um, she wants, you she said she wants to spank the monkey. Here we go. Uh, escaped monkey recaptured after a day on the loose in Florida. A capuchin monkey escaped from Florida sanctuary and fled from the keepers for about a day before being recaptured. Uh, Nancy Nagel board member for Sun Coast Primate Sanctuary in Palm Harbor said workers were trying to retrieve an object from the cage belonging to a 30-year-old Jack, a six-pound black cap capuchin monkey, on Sunday when their net became tangled in the wall, allowing the primate to dart out through the cage's door. Monkeys, cows, goats, horses, it don't matter. If you got a gap in the gate, they're going to dart to it. Um... They said that Jack was finally captured about 10 a.m. Monday. So how long was this monkey out? So I guess it spent the night out. Okay, so it's had a good hit a night out in Florida. All right. Uh, he was close. The captured video Sunday afternoon when he found. Video was found what? Oh, a bike rider. Chase two cyclists chasing them, chasing the monkey. So you got guys on bikes chasing this monkey. Um. They were trying to round him up. Um, she wished the monkey pursuers good luck, and then she got out of there. Uh, so they, evidently, the guys on bikes caught the monkey, and uh, the nonprofit dedicates lifelong care of unwanted and aging animals from various backgrounds. So not only monkeys, but they take they take on old stuff. If you got some old animals, elderly parents or grandparents, they take on that. You can send them to the sanctuary there in Florida. Which I, isn't there a lot of old people in Florida? Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of old people in Florida and uh, this Iowa man, apparently they both have something in common. This Iowa man claps for a world record. And I also heard that the Florida Retirement Home also set records for claps. But I think it's different claps. Um, an Iowa man broke the Guinness World Record by clapping his hands 1,140 times in one minute. Really? You couldn't get that one extra in there? Uh, Dalton Meyer, 20 years old. Of course he's 20 years old. He's probably sitting in his mom's basement playing video games, eating Cheetos. N no job, probably. Um, he said his interest in speed clapping began when he was in elementary school and saw a YouTube video of Kent French, who was once known as the fastest clapper in the world. I wonder if they put him on the sh on the commercial for the lamps, the clapping lamps. He said it came natural to me. It was like I didn't even have to practice. Who practices clapping? How hard is that? Do you need to? Do it, how often does he miss? I don't. I don't. I don't. This is so ridiculous. I'm done with that. That's so stupid. Um, you got a cardboard Trojan horse. You got a British couple with uh, driving ambulance across the globe for world record. You got the escape miniature horse, but we're out of time for all those. We'll have to catch up with some more of these crazy stories on the next one. Uh, what else do we got in here? I don't think there's anything else other than I've got to get out of here. i got stuff to do. Cows to check in the dark. So I don't have any BRD. So we'll catch you guys on the next one. I think the strength of the story is we don't take our foot off the gas. Actually, the reception has been wild. 
to see a grassroots show that's now the number one show on cable is a testament to everybody's hard work. And there's more to come. Taylor continues to write these dynamic, colorful characters, and this year is no different. The audience is going to love it. The Dutton family is so interesting, and what I find riveting about this story is they have to fight to keep their land. It's a tremendous amount of responsibility. John has proven time and again there's nothing he won't do to save the ranch. My father just wants to be a rancher. He said he doesn't want to be a politician. But now John's playing hardball. Whether that's good or bad, that's up for debate. You're all fired. I'll advise myself on policy. He's more than ready to make a decision that doesn't land popularly. Within the Native community, we just can't figure out what it's going to be yet. It's a good thing for John. I don't know how it's going to be for us. So we get to see a lot more of the political world in Montana and what that means. But you all were in Helena. I manipulated the wheel of the government so I could see you. It sets it up for a very interesting year with Beth and I. When's you coming back? Mm, four years. In Casey's mind, it's like, okay, my dad's the governor now. He's always been a big deal. I guess that's a big deal too. But there's nothing more important to him than his family and his wife. They've got their second child on the way and all the dreams and hopes that come with that. John winning the governorship for Jamie, it's obviously devastating because it's been his path. Things between Jamie and Beth are only getting worse. Beth pretty much owns him. Can John trust Jamie? No. <laughs> We're signing a declaration of war. We're already at war. Anytime somebody comes into power, you become a target. Get Sarah Atwood out here. Sarah Atwood is the counselor for market equities. The main goal is to get their project back in line. Turn her loose. I love it when she gets really mad. It means I'm going to make a lot of money. Sarah will be an adversary for Beth in a way that she's never experienced. That's going to be like two Goliaths. When she sees her opportunity, she'll take it. Bringer. <laughs> it's incredibly well executed. It's incredibly well acted with as high a production value as any television show that's ever been made. Taylor expects a high level and every actor's out there getting it done. Now there's just a fire under all of us to maintain that quality. It's so exciting. Our seasons get better and better. There's a lot of turns that are going to happen. It makes for good storytelling. It's going to be bloody. Yellowstone two-hour premiere event, Sunday, November 13th at 8, exclusively on Paramount Network.